is on the call. He bluffs, shoves, Jordan uh, Sheck raises. Nervous goes big. They're not going to get value. Oh, Shows the bluff. Oh, wow. In Barcelona. James, this could get expensive. Woo! We can just wait for Kings here on the button. Wow. Speaking of coolers, Tatani with the only hand better than Kings, somehow three-handed, a sick cooler in progress. And they're likely to get all the money in here pre-flop, and then if those aces hold, we're gonna see a flip-flop of their two chip stacks. This three-handed running aces into Kings, this is, there could not be a bigger cooler. Here comes the four bet to two million. Quickly goes for that click sizing and Tatani has a decision here, and his decision is whether to just call because you want to keep in your opponent's bluffs. Because Nevis could be bluffing here and clicking to two it's million. the only one that could be bluffing here, right? Yes. So because of that, I think we probably should just call with our aces. He does get it in when he runs into his opponent's kings and queens. But he would shut out all of his opponent's bluffs, and aces plays great against any possible hand your opponent can have here. I think the correct play in this particular spot is to just call with aces. Again, it doesn't work necessarily work out for you when you're up against kings, but overall versus the range of your opponents. Tatani may go for all of it, and he does. And of course, with these two matchups, it doesn't really matter. Aces versus kings. Nevis behind. But now they're playing for the chip lead if the statistics hold. I don't know how you can keep your composure like this if you somehow run into aces three-handed. Here comes the flop. Ace-9-9, nine, nine, pretty decisive. <laughs> Full house for Datani. The turn is neither a king nor a nine. That's going to be a double up for Datani. So Neves first to act here in the small blind on the button. Ace Jack. 400. Raises to 400,000. Michelle Dettani in the big blind. Has ace five suited. Artisanal sourdough in action and a call from Dettani. And we will see a flop. And that flop is ace 10 deuce with one club. Oh, James, this could get expensive. Both players making top pair heads up. Obviously, Datani with the backdoor straight draws and backdoor clubs as well. Even more incentive for him to stick around facing some aggression on the flop. And I don't think Neves ever misses a continuation here. No, Datani checks to Neves, who bets 225,000. And Datani will make the call, taking us to the turn. Four of clubs would be ridiculously spicy. How about the Queen of Clubs? <laughs> That'll do as well. Now Neves with the gut shot to Broadway as well. Yeah, Neves still 62% favorite. 11% chance of a chop as Datani checks for a second time. H50. And a bet now of 850,000 into a pot of 1.4 million. Yeah, really, really sizing up now. Really wants to punish. Datani's not going anywhere though. There's a 0% chance he's folding this hand. Calls again. We are going to the river. We have a pot of 3.1 million. The river card is the three oh. of clubs. That is the nut flush for Datani. Oh, and a quick check as well. Checks a third time. Snap checks with the backdoor clubs. 2.1. Neves goes big. Two thirds pot, 2.1 million. Oh, he's fallen right into the trap, James. And just double checking, Datani has the nuts, so has to raise. The question is how much? He's got to go for all of it at this point, right? And I mean, if he does that, there's some flush, two pair straight combos yeah. out there. Nevers doesn't have to call this off. No, absolutely not. However, there are plenty of combinations that probably feel inclined to do so every time. So you just go for all of it. That's oh, a time bank card. That was a very, very flamboyant time bank card. I honestly think, given the action, you just got to go for max. 
Pauline. He does pull the trigger. Datani shoves, and it is all into call for Pedro Neves. But as we were just highlighting, Nick, there's a lot of hands out there that beat him. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, plenty of just like ace, deuce, ace, three, that kind of thing. But the thing is, James, they probably would just flat on the river here, right? They wouldn't be check raising this river. They'd be too concerned about king, jack, ace, 10, ace, queen, aces, queens, tens. He's going to have a very, very slim range here. And it's going to be strong a lot of the time. Well, to use the time on a quote from Scotty Wynn back in 1998, you call it all over, baby. Neves calls here with just top pair. It's over. And the trophy will be presented to Michelle Dutani. All the time bank cards. <laughs> All the time in the world. Can I get a gif of that, please, immediately? That is a meme in the making right there, James. Still has a few time bank cards to burn through. Big decision. Nevers is counting how much he'll be left with if he folds. The answer is 6.83 million, and he'll still be alive. If he does call, he'll have no chips left. He'll be the runner-up. I think the fact he just won a million dollars might also play into this call somewhat, James, if he decides to make it. He's got a single chip in his hand. He makes, he makes the, the call, call, and that will do it. Datani has done it. He is the champion of the PCA 2023 main did event. You, did you? Two Portuguese players heads up for the title and trophy. Having agreed a deal, they are playing for an additional 50K, and that money plus the title and trophy will go to Michelle Datani, freelancers online. He is the champion. So Valea this time raising with the 5-3 off. Um, you know, having made that comment about Jorgna probably having played less heads up than uh, some of his competition, he's been playing very solid thus far. Very pleased to see that. And what a flop that is right there. Hachi Machi, top pair and a straight draw for Jorgna. A bad end of the straight draw for Balea, a gut shot. Galea's bet called 2.4 million in the middle now. Turn card is the Jack of Clubs. Hmm. So the turn is the Jack of Hearts. Over card does complete some straights. Obviously, most notably, the 10 is now a straight, one card straight in the hand. Um, I think, yeah, I was going to say, I, I, there are situations where you barrel over cards. I'm not sure if this is the one. And a straight on the board. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Except the six doesn't count. I would, I would like to sincerely thank everyone out there who noticed the huge error I made in calling the Jack of Hearts the Jack of Clubs. Oh, I mean. And if it weren't for the fact that my father owned the company, <laughs> most of you would probably replace me for noticing yes. that error. Yes, he's doing it, Joe. He's doing it also. Yeah, Joe, I'm sorry, you're bent. <laughs> All right, so I ah, calls. Oh, he folds. I was going to say, you just calling for a chop out there is a really, really bad scene. And once you check, Joe, when you check to an aggressive player in position, you're giving him the keys you, to the you're Lambo. You're just giving him the keys to the Lambo. 
So we are starting this hand about 42 big blinds effective. Peter Jorgna is the shorter of the two stacks. Balea raising with 7-6 offsuit seems pretty standard. Yep, lots of raising from position. Heads up, you're going to be very aggressive. Jorgna with a hand he can defend quite easily. 10-6 of hearts. And he does defend, calling for an extra 400k. And we will see the first flop of this level. And that flop is 10 high, 10-5-3. So it's top pair for Jorgna. Belair does have a gut shot straight draw. Yeah, absolutely. These are boards you want to see bet very aggressively. You have gut shots, heads up, you're in position. You have absolute position against your opponent. So even though Jordan does have a top pair, a C-bet here will take it down a lot of the time when he hasn't connected. Also sets you up for bets on later streets as well, James, if you want to try and convince a five or a three to fold. So I do expect a continuation from Balea pretty much every time. Two million in the middle. Uh, Balea does make a C-bet of 600,000. And with top pair, just a call from Jordan. Yep, I think with a hand like 10-6, you just want to play it slow here. Oh. But wait. That is not a call. Jorgna check raises with a pair of 10s. Okay, so the raise is to 1.5 million. 900,000 to call. And seems that Balea is planning to make that call. I really like this float, James. With the six of spades in your hand in particular, you can actually represent much stronger hands on later streets if the spades start to fall. If your opponent slows down, they might just have pure bluffs that you can get to fold as well. Makes the call, and we go to the turn. I'm calling it, Nick. Action card, four diamonds. <laughs> that would be quite the action card. Oh, come on! <laughs> I got the right color. I didn't get the right suit, but I got the right color. The commentator's curse strikes again. James Hardigan is to blame. It is a turn straight for Balea. And as I said, Jorgna now has the straight draw to go with his 10, so he's going to be of even course. more sticky in these situations. Of course. So 0%. He cannot win the pot outright. But of course, a rivet 7 would chop it. I mean, a deuce would be disastrous for him. In fact, a 10 or a 6 would also be disastrous on the river. Yeah, I think the 10 more disastrous than the 6 because, of course, he might give Balea some straights if a 6 falls, but the trips are really hard to get away from without losing some more. So having check raised flop, Jorgna barrels turn for 2.6. Yeah, full 50% pot on the turn, and there's so much in the middle now. Balea not interested in a deal when he's got the nuts on the turn. <laughs> I'll take all of it. Thank you very much. If he just flats, SPR is still above one, James, so it might be tricky to get the rest in on the river. But if we see Jorgna lead river after having a, called the turn from Balea, it's going to easily go in. SPR way less than one. Looks like he's going to try and raise right here, right now, though. That's one way to do it. So Jorgna leading the 2.6. Balea raising. 5.6. Yeah, very small raise. 4.6, sorry. Well, that is a call. This hand is going to the river. River card. Here's the four of clubs pairing the board. His action is on Jordan. Can he make some kind of blocker bet here? All in. He moves all in. What? And Balea cannot fold this, surely. This is an HTC situation. This is has to call. I know the board's paired, but his hand's too strong. That was so unexpected from Jorgna. He has so much showdown. Is he oh, kind of okay. turning his hand into a, pl a bluff, James? And if he calls, it is all over, baby. I don't think I can fold this on. Have threes, fives. Cool. Congratulations. Woo! <laughs> Mike Watson with King Queen. I'd love to see Mike Watson if he just if he just changes on the break and comes back in a Phoenix Suns journey. Ace four for Mawa. <laughs> Actually, might go. On. Handy one. By the way, two two strong holdings. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Thirty-three. Well He's just gonna ship it. Yep. Oh. It's for thirty-three big blinds. That's a lot of big blinds, though, Sam. It's not exciting. 
it does feel like it's going to be this kind of hand a lot. That's a call. And this could be for the title. Yeah, this is a big old moment. Mawa ahead. Mm. Only very slightly, though. Takes a sip of water. Yeah, his work is done. It's all up <laughs> to the poker yeah. gods now. Both players on their feet. Problem with Queen there. 40K yeah, a lot. on the line. And more importantly, probably for these guys, the Monte Carlo EPT title. That is correct. Wow. Well, that is a pretty good flop for Mawa. Mike Watson cannot <laughs> win the entire pot. Oh, we can go wow. runner, runner, chop. Wow. Oh, my God. Pay <laughs> up, Watson. I'm thinking of a flop, yeah, guys. Oh, yeah, <laughs> then that'll do, do it. Break. Sure. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you can't uh, teach those sorts of instincts. Wow. Leonard Mawa. It is the Mawa power hour. The Grafton. 10-9 suited. Mike raises from the button, from the small blind. 650,000, which seems to be the standard open at this level. 4-3 off for Leonard. He calls, and we will see a flop. 10, 7, 5. Top pair for Mike. Action's been checked to him. Heads up when you're going to be opening a decent percentage of the time from the button. Obviously, the ranges are going to be a little bit wider and you're going to have a lot of different board coverage. So that's why it's just really hard to fold any type of equity. But this bet, pretty sizable. A couple of draws possible, of course. Definitely puts this gut shot straight draw in a tough spot. He's played one time bank chip so far. Okay, he decides to check raise. Yeah. And I definitely can see you know the thought process behind this play because you're not going to have any showdown with four high so if you're able to check raise here and get a fold out of watson this is going to be a really nice pickup but if you get called of course you do have some equity and on certain turns you would just shut down and give up yeah so lots of possibilities you're certainly not going to like it though when watson does call. Yeah. And obviously calling here with top pair, which is a very strong hand heads up. Okay. Ace on the turn. Mike Watson checks behind, and it's the seven of spades on the river pairing the board. So Mauer does not get there. He is left with four high. No, he's playing the board. Mike Watson, tens and sevens with an ace kicker. And as we highlighted on the turn, Mauer has pot behind. Could he be thinking about trying to bluff in this situation after Mike Watson checks back that turn? Might he see an opening? He, he does. does. He bluff shoves the river the 7.5 million. It is a pot size bet. And Mike Watson wants a count. I'm okay, there was that ace on the turn, but Mike's hand is still pretty strong. It is, and you know, from out, he feels like if Watson had an ace, he's gonna most likely be betting the turn because there are so many draws from the flop that you wanna protect, get some value against. But for Watson, he's just wondering, would Mao check raise the flop with middle pair? Would a 7x type hand want to be check raising the flop? I'm not saying for one second this is in any way an easy call. And if you call and you're wrong, momentum shifts again. And suddenly the advantage is with Leonard Mauer. Equally, if he can find the call here, it is over. And he has won his second EPT title. I like to think that 
against a less capable opponent, Watson might not even give it this much thought. But against somebody as good as Leonard Mao, you have to be able to be open to the possibility that he's able to make this play without it. I feel like Watson is going to be able to... Oh. Yes, yes, <laughs> he makes the call and we have our winner. An incredible call from Mike Watson to win the PokerStars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino and become a two-time European Poker Tour champion joining a very select club. Our first hand of heads up play here. Sided Stricker with 9-8 has raised. Vitsiak with ace three in the big. Yeah, Prague is such a beautiful stop as well. Gotta love that too. Each stop has its own energy. It's got its own vibe and I love that about the EPT. It's gonna become really annoying in about two minutes. <laughs> it is an ace high flop. Advantage Vitsiak. Not a lot for Sided Stricker to be excited about, but he is gonna bet this. So top pair, got to feel good about just calling here a bunch, I think. Yep, makes the call. Obviously a board where your opponent might barrel off. Side Stricker does improve on the turn, but not enough to give him the best hand at the moment. Yeah, I was right. It took about 90 seconds for it to become really, really annoying. <laughs> Huh. Another barrel. 700,000 was the bet on the flop. This is 4 million. He's sized up. He's gone over. 4 million into 3.8. Yeah, it looks like he's just using the 8-9 as a bluff despite actually picking up equity here. Makes sense. I don't think the 8 is going to be the best hand on the turn too often. So if you do want to try and take it down, this is a way to do it. Obviously an opportunity to still spike an 8 or a 9, which will give him the best hand going to the river. Vitsiak with top pair makes the call. And the river does not improve side and Stricker's hand. Of course, there is a four card straight out there. There is also a spade flush out there. And the question is, can side and Stricker bet enough here to push Vitsiak off this weak ace? I honestly think this would be a really cool triple barrel. Yes, yes, mate. Very well done. Great spot to do it too. I think having it gone raise call bet call, bet call. Your opponent is just going to bet their queens on this river all the time because they're terrified in this situation they're not going to get value. Shows the bluff. Oh, wow. Shows it to the crowd before he shows it to his opponent. Nick, don't do a statement. <laughs> do you, say don't engage. <laughs> you know what? You know what, James? You're right. You're right. I'm better than that. Thank you. That's a true friend right there, ladies and gentlemen. All right, next hand, queen 10 of the offsuit variety for Sidon Streaker. Raised to 1.1, Vitsiak with six, five of clubs. Uh, this is not an unreasonable three betting hand, James. I would, I, I definitely wouldn't mind a little raisy daisy here. A raisy daisy? Yeah, six, five suited, eight, seven suited. Definitely some frequency of three bet there at the stack depth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 16, 17. 27, 37, I don't know. Vitsiak has played one time bank cards so far. Four million. And you're right, Nick, he has decided to three bet with this hand. And I guess with a hand like Queen 10, with position, Side and Stricker can legitimately call this re raise to four million? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it just plays nicely in position. I don't expect to see a four bet here. That seems a bit over the top. But uh, this is a very, very good situation to try and take it post-flop against an aggressive opponent. Indeed has the best hand, and that's an important part of deciding whether or not you're going to call. How frequently does my opponent actually have a bluff here? 9-5 deuce. So a pair of fives for Vitsiak. Side and Stricker with two overs to the board and a backdoor straight draw. Vitsiak has the pre-flop betting lead and continues into this pot of 8.4 million. 
Yeah, there's quite a few nice turns here for Vitsiak, as well as just having the pair right here, right now. But that small continuation um, in relation to the pot means he's going to float with queen 10 here. A queen or a 10 would be very dangerous for Vitsiak. So it was 3 million, the bet on the flop, called by Seidenstrecker. Vitsiak now slows down, checking this turn card. He is an 86% favorite, but it is Seidenstrecker who's going to take over the betting. I anticipate a check call on this turn loads. A player at Vitsiak's, le Vitsiak's level will understand that his opponent will have floats here with two over cards, for example, like exactly like Queen 10. 3.5 million apiece. Nine of hearts on the river pairing the board. 21.4 in the million. Seidenstricker has less than pot behind. Action's been checked to him for a second time. James, I, I really think that if he pulls the trigger, he could get looked up here. The nine is actually a really, really good card to see if you have 6-5. Counting his stack in relation to the pot. He shoves! He bluffs, shoves with just queen high. And Vitsiak has the best hand with a pair of fives. Wow, he can definitely call here. This is a spot that's going to be bluffed a ton, given the action. If he calls, it's over. If he calls, he's an EPT champion. He asked for a count. I mean, it's most of Vitsiak's stack. It would be a huge mistake to make. You call here, and you're wrong. It's over for you. I really think he might make the call here. It's a huge moment. Imagine making this hero call and claiming victory here in Barcelona. The former professional footballer, the former engineer, a guy who has been mentored and coached by Antoine Saoud with a decision that if he makes the right call, will earn him an EPT title. You can do it, mate. I believe in you. I love hero calls. I think he's trying to get a live read now, James. To be looking at his opponent a ton here, trying to get some live tells. This would be a huge call, and it will be a tournament winning call. He's made the call! Oh, wow. We have a result here in oh! Barcelona. It is Simon Vitsiak from France who takes the title and trophy. The additional 100,000 euros in prize money and crushes the hopes and dreams of the Brazilians. Wow, what a call. Absolutely fantastic poker. He's dominated this tournament and what a dominant call to take the trophy. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe for more awesome poker content and check out this video. The YouTube algorithm seems confident you'll like it.